All right, let's dive right in here. Again, this is the second meetup, turning your idea into an action plan, step-by-step -step blueprint. So in the first meetup, we really talked about, it was just sort of explaining the landscape of various blogging platforms, what you can do, how you can make money with a blog, how you can create courses, how you can make money with courses, the different types of platforms, so the marketplace versus the DIY platform, as well as various tools you could use as a solopreneur or entrepreneur to get things done. So we're just gonna carry that uh, a little bit further today and help you start to take action because um, I actually took a survey and I got some great information I'm gonna share with you about where people said they were at. And so we'll talk about that shortly. But really just want to co cover what this meetup is about. Uh, again, sharing my information and what I've learned over time uh, with you guys about the landscape. Obviously use this opportunity to network, get to know each other, share tips and tactics. Goal setting and accountability. So if you're really trying to make progress, I'm sure you are, that's probably why you're here. Um, and again, we want this to be participatory, so sharing versus just me up here talking. I really want to hear about you guys. I actually met Alex, right, yeah. at a podcaster meetup. So he's actually got a podcast, so he's a great, res great resource for podcasting. If you're interested in that, maybe speak with him after. YouTube channel. Uh, and YouTube channel, I'm I sorry. I went there because there's no YouTube Th meetup okay. here. Okay, yeah. there you go. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for correcting me. And then, of course, we want this to be, uh, at the end of the day, self-funded. Um, and... Uh, so we're gonna figure all that stuff out later. That's not really a big deal. Obviously, there's no charge to be here, which is great. And excited to share information with you. So the real reason we're doing it is uh, really wanna make a transformation, right? Change something in our life to live the life that we want to lead. I recently started working for myself a year ago, and now I'm able to work from anywhere. I'm still not officially over the hump, uh, but I am able to you know, travel and work for where I want to, and I'm, I've started creating these courses and generating some passive income. So. I'm not so far ahead of you guys that it's no longer relevant where I, I won't spend time with you. I think it's important to ha work with someone who's just a little bit ahead of you where they still remember those pain points and those challenges versus someone who's, you know, some of the people that I've followed are, they're making millions of dollars with their courses. So there's a little bit of a disconnect and you'll obviously never get to work with them. So it's nice we can work together in person. And then it's also my opportunity to give back. So I've always taken things from the internet, learned, downloaded tools, and I've never really given back per se, and so this is my opportunity to really give back and teach and share with other people. Um, and again, as I mentioned, really living the life that we deserve. So you'll hear me talk about this, it's really about the path, and for me, sort of that breakthrough was really when I saw someone who was experiencing success, and I got rid of all of the distractions and all the orphan projects. And I said, hey, let me model what I'm doing after this person. And so that was the path. And I'll call that the path. Um, and then it's really, again, how we get there is connecting our passion. We're passionate about something. And it's turning that into something that can generate revenue or, or change our lifestyle. Hey. Hello. Come on in. Have a seat. We just started. You didn't miss too much. I'm sorry, I'm late. No problem. And again, it really opens up the, the possibility to work from anywhere. With the internet, you really can work from anywhere. You can use contractors, other people to do some of the work for you, and you can manage and choreograph this from anywhere. And so we'll talk about some tools that you can use to do that later on in the session today. Uh, and as we mentioned, the whole premise of this meetup is around blogging, course creating, or building some other business. So we call, the, we call it entrepreneur or solopreneur, so essentially it's if it's a one-person show, but it really doesn't need to be. That's just sort of how we, we titled it. And as always, I always want to reinforce, if you only go away with one thing here today, it's the number one rule of digital marketing, which is to build your email list. Okay, no matter what you're doing, you want to build your email list. Um, and so that was really when it started to click for me. I'd known that for years, and I'd always thought like, Oh, getting this tool up and running and doing this and I want to try this new gadget and this new tool and this this thing is great and this and, and I got so distracted and again once I started to model after someone who was succeeding and I so eliminated that and simplified things and was able to start collecting email addresses and I'll briefly cover like my path which we talked about in the last meetup but I'll just cover that real quickly so you can see what I'm talking about but again number one rule of digital marketing is to build your email list okay and Unrelated to that, if you want to see the first session which I recorded, I actually hosted on my personal website, my blog, lancewills.com slash meetup. There may be a form there to get your email address. You can always unsubscribe <laughs> if you like. Um, but I don't know what I'm going to do with that content, but it's there and there's other great resources there as well. Um, you know, my, my, my funnel is focused around resume writing and a course around that, and I'll talk about that later. But um, you'll see all kinds of different content there. 
And as we talked about last time, you know, really good to focus on a niche. One specific thing for me, my brand is kind of this larger path, which is um, my little tagline up there. I help entrepreneur-minded people make more money from their job, create their first passive income stream, and get out of the rat race altogether. So it's this journey, so it's a little bit harder to message and keep all of your content on message, because people are like, why are you telling me about this? I signed up for this thing with you. And so there's challenges with that as well. Hopefully you guys won't be dealing with that. You'll focus on one niche, and you'll build your funnel around that, very specific, everything's related and it'll make your life a lot easier. And so we talk about that as well. So the first thing we want to talk about is really vetting your idea. Uh, and the reason we're going to talk about that is because we took a survey, those of you who filled out the survey previously, and here's what people said they were interested in. Blogging was the, the dominant uh, population, course creation, starting another type of business, and then we had other people sort of free form in the survey, which Maybe I don't know how to build a survey, or they just wanted to provide additional information because it didn't fit in these buckets, which is totally okay because it's, it's good information to know what people want to learn about. So e-commerce, micro-business, so that could be maybe like Shopify stores, things like that, which uh, is very relevant, and I think I'd like to learn more about that. So whether I learn and teach you guys about it or get an expert to come in and speak about it, that might be good. YouTube channel podcasting. We talked about our resident Alex here, who's our guest today, um, and then webinar creation formats and platforms. So. Definitely heavy in the blogging sphere, uh, as well as course creation. Okay, and then we dug a little bit deeper and we said, okay, where are you at in that journey? And the majority of people were, you know, had an idea, but they really haven't done anything yet, uh, or they've started, but they know they could be doing better. So that's about, you know, 60, about 70% of, of our um, people who filled it out. So that's really what I'm focusing our content around, and that's what really steered the subject matter for today's meetup. Okay, so any, anything anyone want to add anything that varies from this, or is this about where you guys are at and what you're thinking you want to learn about? Okay, all right, good. I'm glad we're, uh, we're aligned there. All right, so we really want to decide, is this a business? And that's really what we want to decide from the beginning, because you really want to make sure you have that product market fit, right? So it, it could be, and this is any startup, any company, you really make sure your, uh, the need of the market is aligned with the service or product that you're providing. Um, and then what's your objective, right? Are you, are you trying to educate people, help people? Are you trying to you know, build charity? Are you trying to build a following? So you really need to be laser focused on what you're trying to do. And there's different objectives for different phases of your business. And so you'll think about that early on. Your first m might be just to get it done, get, <laughs> get V1 done or version one of your product. That's really super important. And, and I have a saying, it's, uh, done is better than perfect. So just get it done. It's going to be ugly. And you can talk to expert marketers. They're going to tell you like, oh, my best performing, um, uh, what was it called? Infomercial was the first one. It was the ugliest. But that one like did amazingly well. And the polished one, which was, you know, Hollywood produced, performed terribly. Okay, so done is better than perfect. And then, of course, how will you monetize? How will you make money off of it? Are you going to put ads on your blog? Are you going to sell a product? Are you going to do a joint venture and partner with someone and maybe you know, sell their product through your, your channel? Um, so you really need to, to, to think through that lens. And then, of course, will, pe will people pay for it? Or again, do you want to use advertising? There's other ways to make money. It's not just simply about charging people. Okay? Uh, and then you'll absolutely want to do this work before you create anything. That's really what we're talking about today. Because universal truth, you make money before you make a single asset. So by being thoughtful and choosing what you're going to go after, what niche, what product, what space, that's where the money's made. It's not, well, I'm going to make this widget and then I'll figure it out and try to find out who I can sell it to. It's really doing that research up front. Okay? All right. Now, there are several ways to determine if demand exists for your product. Since I did online courses, I'm starting there. So I have a few courses on Udemy, which is a marketplace that people, uh, Udemy drives traffic to the marketplace. And then my course is hosted there, almost like Amazon. And then I make money each time they sell it. And of course, they take, they take a share as well. Now, what Udemy has done is they actually have a tool for um, helping you determine courses that could be profitable for you, right? And they have some very, like, you always want to be early if you can, because you'll see on Udemy the top selling courses, the ones that have been there for a long time, were usually one of the first entrants. And yeah, they have to be decent courses as well. There's gonna have 
there have to be a quality course or quality experience for the student. But generally, it's uh, first person there usually wins and is hard to usurp or kick from that, remove from that position. So you'll see really bizarre uh, topics here, like promising topics, Gradle. That's probably a computer programming language. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> uh, Matt painting, phone unlocking, productivity apps, Instagram photography. So don't let these uh, scare you. There's definitely other things you can do. Um, but this is a great tool that anyone can go into and search for something. So we'll actually try that right now. Let's see if this is going to cooperate with me. Okay, Marketplace Insights. And I know it's probably really small. I apologize for that. Let me see if I can zoom in here. Oh, and a mosquito. Be careful, there's a mosquito in here. All right. So who's got an idea for a topic? Who wants to just throw something out there? We'll just put something in. Parenting. Parenting. All right, I love it. Let me get my spelling right. Parenting. All right. Let's see what comes up. All right. What topic you're interested in? Parenting. And you can also, they have different languages here. Opportunity over for your English course on parenting. Bring your A game to succeed in this topic. Uh, so the demand is high, but there's also a lot of courses. And the top monthly revenue, so someone's making $8,000 a month on a parenting course. That's pretty wow. awesome. But that's the top, right? That's, like that's the top. That's the, the top. The median is twenty three dollars. Okay. That means that's awesome. Because a lot of people are making a few dollars. No, no, I, get, I understand yeah, yeah. math, but like a lot of people making a dollar and just like two making correct yeah. thousand. Okay. Correct. correct. <laughs> okay. And so that's that's what you'll find. And again, this is only you to me. This is their tool. This is their data. But it's a great place for you to consider as one of your data points as you determine what course or what you want to make. Is that the biggest platform to host these? Yeah, for a marketplace. So there's a couple different models. I talked about this last week, but I'll cover it real quick. So there's essentially two models for online courses. There's a marketplace where they drive the traffic. It's free for you to host your course there. They drive the traffic, okay? And then there's kind of a DIY platform where you pay a platform, like Teachable is one of them, and then you have to do all the marketing. It's just a tool, okay? So you have to drive all your traffic. So generally what people will do will start on a marketplace like Udemy, where it's easier to get started, kind of vet your course, tweak it, improve it. You're going to get feedback from customers because Udemy drives you know, traffic. Uh, and then eventually you'll want to, instead of giving them like 50%, which is generally the split, you'll want to get to the next platform like Teachable where you're paying and then you keep all that money. You keep like 97%. They just take a small transaction fee for the, for the payment processing. Is there any rule against hosting on both? No, you can host on both. No, and then there's another thing. There's another marketplace which is Skillshare, and that's that's a monthly like thirty dollars a month for unlimited courses. The problem with that is it really devalues your course, right? So that's why you know you have to make decisions right now. I'm 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 on both, but my goal is to pull them off of there and to go to Teachable and just host them there myself and do all the marketing and market to my list and things like that. Um, Again, this is just one tool to use. There's lots of other things, but uh, one data point that you guys can use, and that's what it's all about. So top search keywords, parenting, neuroscience for parents. So that's interesting. It's really, you really want to go niche, I think, if you're going to do a popular topic. So neuroscience for parents, that might be interesting. I wonder if we can search for that one and see what it says. How to get your uh, child into a, a really good university. <laughs> yeah. There you go. I was exposed today. <coughs> I think watch the news. People are paying up to a million dollars in the Ivy League schools to get their kids in. Interesting. Well, let's see if we could do it like. Yeah, the guys we've seen it Get into college, not an existing job. This, again, this is there. There are specific categories, so I wouldn't be surprised if that's not in there. But I was kidding. Well, there's. <laughs> but it's a money making. College admissions, here you go. Check out these topics. All right, so college admissions, that's probably relevant. Let's see what it says. Aim for high ratings to succeed in this topic. Top monthly revenue, $81. So not too exciting. But uh, parenting was a good one, thank you. You're like my shill in the crowd to give me a good one, because the ones I searched for earlier were like a few hundred dollars, so that was a great one. Um, Okay, super. So let's jump back in here. Uh, let's see here. Let me get back to here. Uh, 
All right, so that's one data point, one place you can look to determine uh, demand. And, this and there's is specifically for course creation, you to me. For the most part, right? For the most part, yeah. I mean, y you can use any tool as you see mm -hmm. fit, but yes, specifically okay. for course creation. Now, for blogs, a little bit different, um, but again, you're still looking for demand. So we'll talk about that right now. Okay. This is, uh, you know, YouTube, right? So if you l see a lot of people searching for certain topics, a lot of views, a couple hundred thousand, million views, then there's probably something there, right? Especially if it's something niche, like back in back in the day, you know, NLP was kind of a nascent term just coming up, and that was a big seller for a lot of uh, a lot of affiliate marketers as well, which we're going to talk about. So that was a great term to go after. Also, Pinterest um, is another great place to look for those things, right? So you see the trends that are coming up there. We also have the Google Keyword Planner. It's getting a little bit more geeky, but um, since it is a free tool, I did want to talk a little bit about that. And let me see if I have, can show you something on that one here. Uh, okay. So, let me see if I can get this bigger again. Um, how to get into college. Let's try that one. So, this is Google's tool for their uh, Google Ads. It used to be called AdWords, and it helps you do research around what keywords you want to go after or buy or bid on. So, when people search in Google, then you your ad will be listed at the top two or three spots, which are usually the paid or promoted spots. So this will give you a sense of what that would cost you. So how to get into college, max cost per click $3. Um, so for, what is it, 60 clicks for $73. So that's not too bad, actually, a little over a dollar. Uh, again, these are auctions. So this is really just another tool for you to conduct some research. And so this is if, let's say, you had a course and you wanted to buy some keywords in Google. This will help you determine what those will cost. And you'll start, once you start playing around with this tool, you'll get a sense of like what's expensive. So, you know, lawyer terms are probably $75, $100, maybe more sometimes. Um, and other terms can be much more reasonable. Yes? So every time someone clicks that, you owe Google Ads. Correct. Um, a little over a dollar. Yes. Regardless of how far they go into it. Correct. Just to click. Just to click. Okay. Just to click. Okay. And so that's a way to also test. Um, besides doing the research here, you could start a campaign and see if you get any traction for a certain term. So that's another way that you could do it as well. Um, there's other stuff that Google requires you to have behind that, like a landing page and things like that. So it's a little bit more involved, but uh, another great way that you can uh, test out different, uh, different uh, demands for things and get a sense of what that CPC is. Like I said, cost per click dollar, you know, reasonable versus twenty-five, fifty. then it's highly competitive and you'll want to watch out. Um, another great way, and again, this is just a generic guerrilla tactic, uh, is Craigslist. It's a great way to test demand for anything. So let's say you're selling a product as an entrepreneur. You know, build an ad in Craigslist with those keywords and see if you get traction, right? So right now I'm actually advertising my digital marketing agency on Craigslist, and I didn't think it would be feasible. I didn't think it would work, but I'm getting the whole spectrum of, of businesses uh, in there, and actually one that could be a, a good client for me. And then, of course, there's Amazon, which is, again, another marketplace, right? Sellers put their products on there, Amazon drives all the traffic, and then they get some sort of cut of the revenue. Um, and in particular, Kindle's great because Kindle is very specific on topics, and that's where I started, was making some Kindle books. Uh, and there's some great tools that, um, that I'll talk about here uh, that you can actually look at and help you calculate, you know, what what kind of money these people are making on certain topics. So, so the Kindle train is kind of left, right? Tons of people are just farmed out writing to all these people in India and kind of just put out a bunch of books, as many as they could, and the quality really went down. And so it's, it's changed a little bit, but there's still, there's still some ways you can make money there. Um, in fact, let's see here. So where are we at here? So this is Kindle. And again, if you can look into like one of these books, Yoga is probably not a great uh, category because of the low volume. So let's do uh, let's do relationships. The big three categories in general are health and fitness, uh, relationships and dating, and I think what's finances. Finances and real estate, I believe. 
So let's see here. I hear you. That's sponsored. Let's do this. Is top Kindle books for relationship bestseller and sponsored. All right, we'll click into this one. And the reason I want to show you this is you can you go just cost them a little bit. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. I don't like to do that, but I needed one that's that's sold. So here, this is okay. So this is the rank paid in Kindle. So it's thirty six seventy. And there's tools out there where you can, I may have to reload this page. So this, this is an estimate. This calculator says they're selling 58 books per day. So you can get a sense of, is this a topic you might want to go after? How well is this book doing? Where do you get that calculator? You can just do a search for a, like a Kindle, a Kindle cal sales calculator, Kindle sales rank calculator. Again, and, and you can use these tools for anything, even for a blog, for your course, for your business, right? So next thing we're talk about is affiliate. So as we showed in that survey earlier, some people are getting started. I wanted to show you a way to get started where you don't need to bang your head against the wall. If you don't have a product, you can start selling affiliate uh, products immediately. Okay, and so I'll explain what affiliates are. Essentially, someone has a product and you could be their you know, their contract remote salesperson, and then every time you s drive a sale, you know, you get a fraction of the money. Okay, so I think everybody, everybody understand aff affiliates. If anyone's confused, let me know, okay? So there's uh, lots of platforms you can use to sell affiliate products on there. Commission Junction used to be the biggest. They have a lot more requirements now. They're more stringent, so you'll have to have like a certain volume of traffic to your blog to sell uh, through uh, Commission Junction. Um, ClickBank is a great one, and actually we'll talk about that next. That's where they have a lot of uh, products, much like the products that we may come up with. That, uh, and we'll actually go and I'll show you that as well. Um, and there's a, there's a rating, a gravity rating, which will determine what are their hot selling products, which is both good and bad. Good at selling, but bad, it could be competitive. It could be a lot of people selling that product. And then, of course, Amazon has uh, their affiliate. And there are a lot of companies have their affiliate. Even Udemy has their affiliate. So I get affiliate sales each month and I get like I think 25% of whatever you know Udemy gets 50 the affiliate gets 25 and then I get 25 so um, let me go into Clickbank one second here Okay, you guys obviously can't read that. So we're in ClickBank here. Let me zoom in. All right, is there a, I did a search for Instagram. Someone give me a, a product topic, anything. Tarot. Tarot. Cards. Tarot, Tarot cards. cards, thank you, sorry. I'm, the art, okay, beautiful, okay. So let me make this bigger. That's a little bit better for you guys to see. So here we have, these are sorted by average dollar per sale. So here you can make $90 for every one of these that you sell. The art of covert hypnosis, massive commissions, extreme conversions. Let's take a look at what that looks like. So this will send you to the sales page that you would actually be sending prospects to as well. Okay. And this looks like, oh, this is a really nice long form sales letter. So if you guys aren't familiar with, this is the kind of the previous gold standard on sales letters. We call it the long form. Oh, there's that NLP I referred to right there. So more NLP in here. And you can tell this is, this is, is it's dated, but you know what? This stuff still works, right? Look at all this stuff. Chapter one, chapter two. They got the picture of the CDs there. Who's DVD, who's got DVDs anymore, right? This just keeps going and going and going and going, okay? And then, you know, all the testimonials and... All right, but still making 90, 90 bucks when they sell that. So let's change this over to gravity. What's gravity? Gravity is the ClickBank term for essentially sales velocity, so number of units and money made. So it tells you something that's actively selling now, okay? So the bright star of clairvoyance, that one's $29. So let's see if this landing page looks a little bit more.
current. A little bit. Oh, it's got a fancy video background, kind of like that. Slow loading, however. It's like AOL. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, so it goes. Uh, let me go back here and do a search for Instagram. Search. Oh, that just looks weird. Hold on. All right, so this is by popularity. Oh, this is social media marketing, generic category, which is fine. My M -univer I am University, okay. $62 by sale, let's look at gravity. Let's see what's happening here. Paid social media jobs, even higher conversions, $18 per sale, so pushing to some sort of a job site. Okay, so this one has an actual link you can add to your blog page? Yes, so when you sign up and you sort of commit to sell one of these products, mm -hmm. they'll have a whole page with all kinds of ads in different ad units, mm -hmm. all the creative. Right. So you're gonna have all the content. Swipe copy, which is just copy and paste text you can put in to drip email campaigns, everything. They should have everything for you, okay? okay. Um, so and um, this is ClickBank, right? They don't have any requirements to sign up with them? They, they do. I don't know what they are. It's been a while since I've used ClickBank. Um, they definitely do, right? So they'll probably want to know about your blog or how you're selling it, but they're more open than... Um, That's the biggest challenge I've had with my blog. What? I mean, the ones that don't have any requirements are very spammy. Yes. And I don't yeah. want those on right. the page. Right. The ones that are not spammy, then... They require you to already be a popular blog. Right. Okay. So there's there's some there is some in the middle, but you just have to find those, right? That's always the challenge. Um, Can you just explain that gravity again? What 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 exactly that that uh, it, it number just, means? Yeah, it's just instead of saying, so if you look at like average per sale, mm -hmm. like twenty six dollars, but if it's not hot and no one's selling it and it's the the units aren't moving, no one's making sales. It's not good, right? So gravity is essentially people are selling this now. This is being sold now, like it's active. Like people are buying now. Mm -hmm. I mean, so that, on that, that one said 48 point something, that means that's not good? I no, the $48, that's $48 you make per sale. No, school. right there, so it said gravity was 46.74 for this particular product. So what does that mean to us? Right, so they, they, have, uh, they have a definition. I don't know the full-on definition of what the 46 means, but right. obviously this is the largest gravity, so that's the one that's most actively selling right now. Oh, so, I see, okay. Right, okay. so as opposed to like, the score. it's like the score of like, easier to sell or people are selling it now. Okay. But the downside is, so I actually looked at their just text definition and they said gravity is good. High gravity means higher proclivity to sell now, but also could be more competition. Mm -hmm. So if you were to push Facebook ads or something, you may be competing. There may be a lot of competition, right? Gotcha. Not just okay. Competing. okay. All right, good and question. And you also have to watch Facebook if you have to read the Facebook um, book uh, terms of service. Right. Very often right. they do not allow yeah. affiliate marketing. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, they'll require some sort of landing page and, you know, they, they just don't want to be like a affiliate junkyard, right? So everybody's just throwing these Facebook ads on, you know, hypnosis and things like that. So, all right. So, um, wanted to talk through these things with you and answer any specific questions. Again, we have blogging, which is either self-hosted, like on GoDaddy uh, or WordPress.com or sites like Medium, which still require Medium's just kind of like a long-form blog, almost like a news site, where people put uh, their own blog articles. Very good for SEO, because it's generally higher quality content. Not everybody can will rise in the, in the search results on Medium, but it's a great uh, site for, um, if you're a good writer and you can drive traffic that way. But you're still gonna need a path to put them on, or a funnel, or a website. So Medium's probably not gonna be your primary blog platform. Um, again, it may require an external website. And then we talked about courses, we talked about the marketplace like Udemy or the DIY platform like Teachable, right? Which I think you want to graduate from a marketplace, start there, really cut your teeth, test out your content, improve things, 
get feedback from students, engage with them, see what they want to know. You know, you can maybe message them, survey them, see what content they want to learn about, and that can guide your um, your content decisions. We talked about affiliates uh, and how you can get things up and running. We talked about getting up and running as soon as fast. We've mentioned about the limitations around Facebook ads and things like that, which may require some additional um, assets for you to build. And then, of course, there's other businesses which we had covered or we saw in the survey as well. So um, I'd love to hear, and obviously don't want to put anyone on the spot, but I'd love to hear, and you can just say, not ready yet, but uh, I'd love to hear you know, what you guys is channel that you're focusing on now, that would really help me. So I'll go first. Mine is online courses, looking to move off of a marketplace and build a, a funnel. Um, and I actually will cover mine here shortly. I'll just do a brief intro um, to sell it direct uh, through Teachable. So you, you mind going? I know no, you. No, I don't mind. Um, I have a blog, uh, and I'm trying to go into YouTube. So, uh, that's what I'm doing right now. I started the blog last year, but took a break um, to some personal um, situations. Um, it's just the biggest challenge that I found is how to monetize the blog and how to actually get traffic to my blog. So I've tried Facebook ads, and again, I stopped for since May of last year. I'm just getting back into it. Um, so yeah, it's just getting traffic to the page, and also I found out that not all traffic is monetized traffic, so certain countries are not paid. So that Interesting. Is, is, uh, yeah, a little bit of a challenge, and I'm trying to go into YouTube. Great, That's thank you. Mm -hmm. I am trying to start a, uh, a movement, a grassroots movement to change our election system. Cool. So I don't see it being a necessarily a, a money maker. Yes. Um, but ideally I'd like to at least pay for the majority of my my costs. Okay. Um, I think it's a perfect storm for election reform. I think the country is sick of corruption and sees the terrible <laughs> type of election system we have from delegates and super delegates and electoral college and all these middlemen that are unnecessary and um, it's called electionequality.org or dot com. I plan to launch in the next two weeks. I'm going to a conference in Nashville Great. at the end of the month with the leaders from all over the country, and I gotta make it happen before okay. I go to that. Very cool. And and crowdsourcing could be or crowdfunding could be um, something yeah. you consider as well. So thank you for sharing. I've not started yet. I'm okay. gonna start with a blog platform at some point. Okay. Um, I, I, again, I don't have to make money off it right away, so I'm kind of looking more like how do I drive the eyeballs first to Good. Know, get people to the blog, and then I'll worry about how to monetize it. Great. Great. Yeah. Good content and just. Consistency. I mean, any blogger will tell you just consistently putting content out there. So, great. Thank you. Uh, I build a course. Um, I have two businesses. I'm trying to get the traffic with blogging. Mm -hmm. What I'm interested in is in how to farm out the, uh, no, not farm out, how to put the blogs in other websites and other publicity mediums, whatever, so people can come back to the course. Got it. Okay, great. So you are you, so you have a course that's your primary vehicle, and then you have blogs, and it's about selling the course. Yeah, okay. around the course, I'm talking and blogging. And yeah. Great. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Crystal. Um, I've been kind of stuck in neutral because of a family crisis situation that resolved tonight. Great. My uh, autistic grandson, who's psychotic, got placed in a residential care home. Okay. And that has just like stalled me cold. Um, right now, I'm out to earn anything I can. <laughs> but you've been. <laughs> what? He's blogging. I, I'm not doing a damn thing. But uh, I've okay. been studying like a demon for social media marketing. Super. Um, I've been doing nothing for the past year and a half. Well, you're here. Like hell. You're here, so now that's I'm, a good start. Now I'm literally today, as of four o'clock, able to move forward. All right, excellent. Thank you. Hello. Um, I'm Monica, and I'm new to all of this stuff, and just sounded interesting, and I want to get, um, I want um, to um, do classes and courses and things like that. Okay, wonderful. Well, anyone can start anywhere. Uh, at the Udemy conference, one of their top sellers is a woman, and her course is on um, sourdough leavening or making the sourdough dough 
base starter. Right. Starter. Thank you very much. It's on the rise. Hey, oh, <laughs> all right. Perfect. So, anyways, all right. Uh, my name is Alex. I'm a full-time YouTuber, and I have the audience. Uh, but I, I know a lot of YouTubers have courses. Um, I also was before that I was a web developer, so I know how to put it together. My challenge is. You know, my audience, they're electric car drivers. A lot of times, they already know everything. Mm -hmm. um, what can I teach them? Because I don't want to put a course together, and then it doesn't sell. Yeah. And instead of selling something else, maybe having an extra sponsor, I would be selling something that's just going to be a dud yeah. and spend a lot of money putting it together, you know, creating videos and stuff like that. So um, I just want to just learn about, like, for example, where do you go? What kind of marketplaces are yeah. out there? I'll probably just bring my own audience, but I'd like to know, like, what would I be teaching them? I yeah, I mean, you should just ask them, right? So figure out a way oh. to survey them, <laughs> things like that. And I know that there's there's pitfalls <laughs> with that, but uh, you can find start conversations and see where their gaps in their knowledge are. Again, that's a much deeper deeper yeah. challenge. Yeah. I know it's not that easy, especially with that audience because yes. they're yeah. they're geeky. I have tried. I have tried I, I'm I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. They okay. Lie. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. A lot of, of times, course. Like, we'd love that, and then nobody shows up. Of course. That's why I'm, of course. <laughs> you know. All right. Thank you, Alex. Hi. Uh, I have not started anything. Okay. I looked into it several years ago, uh, but I kind of want to do the whole full-time YouTube thing, and I've just recently, yeah, in fact, just started looking, and I found you guys. So oh, great. That's kind of awesome, and, cool. and just last week. So I don't really know where my focus is, like healthy living um, and travel, so okay. it's kind of broad, right? Yes. Um, so I'm not really sure how to hone in on that and and where to start with okay. it, whether it's a blog or YouTube or but I do want to start making money as soon as possible great so I think I think YouTube should be in all of our toolkits mm -hmm. and so maybe we can sweet talk someone who's doing it to maybe <laughs> yeah. I actually just about to start a new YouTube channel about how to teach people how to make money not just get subscribers but how to make money because my, my subscriber base is tiny but I make a good six digit salary so that's what I wanted to start about the channel Good. about. You know? Well, we By are. By all means, I'll be more than happy to start here. All right. Uh, you know, we'll be your yeah, guinea pigs. Yeah, yeah. We'll be your guinea pigs. Actually, a great, yeah. great way to do it. Yeah. And I would say yeah. for everyone else, I'm a firm believer in the courses. I think it's a great, another tool to add to your tool belt. Um, it's pretty forgiving. It's still early on that there's still opportunity to make money. I'm not saying you're going to break the bank, but if you do it well, and it'll pull you to the next thing, and then you know, you'll have your own audience and, and you can sell it directly. Yes, Crystal? One of the things Russell Brunson and uh, Julie Schoen says, uh, Stowen says, is um, get a rough idea for your, like you want to do a, a, a YouTube thingy class thing about doing, um, making money on YouTube. Um, if you do like a little class on how to make money on YouTube, get some guinea pigs. Well, the class that I was thinking about is from my audience, from my existing YouTube channel, and they're electric. It's about electric cars, and it's hard to teach electric car owners about electric cars. Yeah, no, That's, but, but you oh, know, the other one, I'm just going to start a free YouTube channel. No, but now. what I'm yeah. saying is, it, you know, the concept. Let me discuss yeah. the concept yeah. with that concept. You get a, a group of guinea pigs, and then you start the course. Like, you, it sounds really facetious. You know that that guy, catch me if you can. Read one, teach one. Sure, okay. You teach the first class, get yeah. feedback, yeah, teach the yeah. second class, and then you build the course out with the guinea pigs, and they get a great deal, like yeah. you know, ten bucks or something. But you get live feedback throughout the course. Yeah, I think that worked. This didn't work. I think yeah. for that course yeah. on teaching people how to make money on a YouTube channel, that's that's what she's referring to, like yeah, yeah. using us as essentially. I wasn't like going to charge for it. I was, gonna, I was just going to start a YouTube channel. That was the course that I wanted to start was about like. For my existing audience, but that okay. one I'll yeah, do but for the free thing is, is do you know what I don't know about yeah. YouTube? Huh? Do you know what I don't know about YouTube? I can probably guess. <laughs> no, I'm asking. Okay. You know, I'm, I mean, okay, the thing is, no. you want to teach me about yeah. YouTube, all right? Yeah. But you have no feedback. Let's let's keep on going. YouTube. We'll have a conversation at the end. I just want to keep you things have no moving. No information on what I need to know. Oh. Perfect. Thank you all for contributing. I never want to put anybody out there, but. Um, We'll talk a little bit about tools that you can use as well. Again, I go back to Udemy. So any of your assets, you want to make sure you're providing good quality assets. When I say assets, I mean anything from ads to videos to audio to podcasts, everything. So 
you, Udemy has a nice tool where you can submit a test video. Um, and I'll actually go in and show you. Oops, where's that at? Where we are back here. Oops. Performance, no. Tools right here. <coughs> test video. <coughs> And you can see the level. I'll show you the level of feedback that they give you. This one is from a couple years ago. This was the first one. So bear with me here. Again, I don't want to hold anything back, so we're going to show you uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Hi, my name is Lance Will. So you can't hear the audio too well, but essentially they're just going to look at, you know, this has got a talking head in the corner, which is me uh, recording audio and then talking through a presentation. Okay, and I actually talk through what my setup is, and then they provide feedback. So AV production, video quality exceptional, audio quality exceptional. I really had trouble. I got my first video rejected because the audio quality was poor. I had a lot of noise, so I had to use um, a tool and, and clean that up. Do they have people uh, look, at, look at all this, or is this There are happen? humans who are actually, yes, okay. yes. I'm sure they're using some sort of automation at this point because they've gotten bigger. Um, delivery acceptable, again, a little bit stiff. Maybe that's why I'm doing this uh, meetup to improve my delivery. <laughs> exceptional uh, mistakes, volume is exceptional, pace is acceptable. So again, this is something you could use even if you're not gonna put a course up on Udemy. You know, if, if you abuse it, I'm sure they probably won't review your videos, but, but you can just, you can go through and submit, uh, let's say once you first get your setup, your home studio setup is invaluable um, because the, the last thing you want to do is have to reshoot your entire, let's say, course, right? You shoot your whole thing and then you send it to them and they're like, oh, the, there's too much noise or there's a hum and we won't, we won't publish it, okay? So they'll reject you. So again, a free resource for you to use to review some of your quality, um, uh, review your quality. Get invaluable feedback and you never want to uh, go through this long thing without doing something like this. It's like, uh, you know, publishing a book without spell checking. Uh, what is a course? Is a course more than one class? A course is a bunch of videos. So I can actually show you. I'll show you my course um, maybe at the end and you can see what that looks like, okay? More free tools. So Grammarly, everybody knows about Grammarly. There's a free version, invaluable. Everybody should use it. I have a paid version. Uh, exactly, and, and it's great. I always tell people, put a reminder on your calendar for Black Friday, because a lot of software goes on sale. I got it like 25% off for the paid plan uh, on Black Friday, so. Is it really good, the paid plan? Yes. It's, it's priceless. One of the things yes. about Grammarly is once you, even if you sign up for the free version, mm -hmm. you get on their list, and then they're always throwing you 25, 50, 75. You just wait long enough, they'll give you a price worth it. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. So there's uh, the standalone version, uh, which is like an app for Mac. It also works in Microsoft Word uh, Office on PC, and they're now in beta on Google Docs, which is... It work, yeah, it and works. And even on your browser, just... It works on Chrome. It works in Chrome, In too. Chrome, exactly. There's mm -hmm. a plug-in for is Chrome. Is it all that will work with uh, Google Mail? Yes. All right, there you go. It, w it works in Google. I'm a dyslexic, honey. I need grammar. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, and of course, Google Docs, everyone should be using this. No more Microsoft Word documents. You lose your computer, it crashes, whatever happens. It's uploaded real time on the web and you can collaborate with people. So you can have two people editing the document at the same time, which is wonderful. So everybody, if you don't already, comes free with your Gmail account. Um, and uh, it's, 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 it's incredible. So definitely use Google Docs. Asana, I say Asana, I say Asana. People say asana, but yoga, it's the shavasana, asana, which is a pose, so I say asana. But people say asana. Anyways, <laughs> so it's a real-time project in task management and collaboration and calendar. And it's really great because you can use it. It's very malleable. You can use this tool any way you see fit. I actually used it previously to um, capture links, sites, tools. I would just create, and I'll actually show you what the tool looks like right now. Uh, I would create, um, let me get here. So here's the platform, and you essentially create these projects on the left, and then you can create them in two formats. One is a board, so much like sticky notes where you can drag and drop these. This is great for like organizing your thoughts or ideas or a process or a flow. And then the other method is their standard, which is sections and tasks. So these are essentially sections. So I have like a pre-pre-launch, pre-launch, launch, post-launch. Pre -launch, post -launch. 
And then I can list here different tasks that I want to do for each one. So um, pre-launch, maybe by email list, right? And then I can say, oh, I'm going to assign this to myself. I'm going to put a due date of Monday. Uh, and then you'll get like an email with a summary of what you have due, all these outstanding tasks. Phenomenal tool. Again, you can even create, like I said, I had for uh, uh, tools, I would actually lost a lot of information because I merged with a previous employer and then there was a weird permissions thing. Anyways, so uh, you How can... How much does that cost? Uh, it's free. Everything I'm using here is free. And then there's, of course, paid plans as well. But you'll never need the paid plan because you can have different workspaces. So you can even have personal projects and then you can have your other business as well. So you can use multiple, um, multiple workspaces. I've never run into it where they try to charge me. As, as, go ahead. Yes, that's probably when you're going to have to pay, okay, just to let you know. But you can connect with m people, and I think you can get away with not paying. So you can add co collaborators and collaborators and things like that. Phenomenal tool, highly recommend it. And again, you know, some people use um, Evernote for like notes and just saving links and things that they like, blog articles, things like that. You can use Asana, and it's, it's phenomenal. And it's, it's, it w it's, been the fastest tool. It's probably slowed down a little bit as they've built more features, but it was always instant, real time, like faster than Google Docs. It's always been amazing. So, really great tool. Slack, this is more for when you start to work with other people. So, I use Slack for my digital marketing agency. I have my clients invite me to their Slack channel. They use it so I can stay in involved in that. And then for my uh, marketing agency, I use Slack and then I invite contractors and other partners on there. And I'll show you what that looks like for people who aren't familiar with Slack. Uh, let's see here. You kind of use it like a CRSM? Yeah, like a CRM, sure. It's, a, it's actually more like a communications platform. Give me a second here. So you can create channels. So this is my agency. You can create channels and then you can have conversations just siloed or isolated by channels. So let's say you have a specific project you can just have conversations there. It, it really eliminates the need for email. You can save images there. Totally free. I think it's up to 10,000 messages it'll save in your history. And then it'll start deleting them. It'll still be free, but you just won't keep them. Um, and then you can also have direct uh, messaging with individuals as well. And then there's lots of different plugins. So like a Google Doc plugin, when someone shares a doc, it'll, it'll show up down here on this Google Drive right here. So um, phenomenal tool, invaluable. You'll People will be like, don't send me emails anymore, just Slack me. And then there's some fun plugins as well. You can do like a, uh, I don't know if I'll do this, if I do this. I don't know if they have it integrated here, actually. So. Um, it also works on your phone, and it, it pushes yeah. you when, when people respond to you or something. You get a notification That's right it. on your phone. So Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Um, it's a good thing for me because when, if I'm on the computer doing other stuff, yep. and I might not see it, pop up in the top, yep. then it's, it's ringing on my phone like, yep. oh, okay, it reminds me to go check or go back exactly. over there or if I'm out. Exactly. To, if I needed to do something or send something to other people in my team, I can just send it right yeah, it's it's better than text messages. It's amazing right? and again, working from anywhere, you got Slack on your phone, you have so much more confidence because messages are shorter, you can respond on your phone usually and it's it's fast. I've never seen so many people excited about Slack in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and there are only two here, so. Oh, man. <laughs> and then we talked about this last time. This is about how you get things done. Again, other sites. We talked about Grammarly. Uh, this presentation is actually done on Canva. It's got a built-in slide viewer, which I didn't know about until last session. It's pretty amazing. One second here. So this camera will only record like 20 minutes at a time. I don't know why they built that limitation in. Keeps me honest. Keeps me sh keeps me short and sweet. So uh, as we talked about last time, um, Canva is phenomenal. Lots of templates. Templates for creating marketing proposals, cards. They now have the ability to print. So if you need to print physical flyers, you could design it in Canva, and they have a partner that'll print it and ship it to you. So they keep building more and more features in the platform. Totally free to get started. Amazing. Okay. Uh, I built this entire presentation in Canva. So uh, Fiverr for contractors, 
basically they started with five dollars to get anything done. Generally leverages you know the the difference in economies. So people in India and Pakistan, five dollars is still significant for them. And then they can do you know Excel work, and you can do just about anything on there now. And they've moved up market, right? So now it's more expensive, but still reasonable. The challenge is you got to go through a lot of fivers to find someone who's good. Just like anything, right? Even with people here in the states. And then Upwork is similar, uh, more upper end. You're going to find you know people across the the U.S. again, but a little more expensive, but also better quality. You can find developers on there or anything. So again. Early on, we don't have a lot of money, but we got to decide what makes the most sense to outsource. And uh, these tools are instrumental, and I use them all the time myself. Um, so again, just to recap how we get things done, learn from people who are already succeeding, work smarter, outsource it when you can, identify that path, create a plan, keep it simple, um, invest in yourself, your business, and your education to get there faster, and then get an accountability partner as well. So this is something that I discovered that I really like, which is a vision, a vision statement, and it's essentially sort of your, your roadmap, your goals, and certain things. So for my, um, for my personal brand, here's an example of what I put. Uh, build my brand starting with, it's more about your goals as well as specific tasks. And it's something you should look at every day, maybe a couple times a day, to sort of reinforce it in your brain. Um, and this could be a whole separate topic altogether. Um, but long-term goal, building a monthly subscription community, coaching program, and more online products. So short-term goals, drive 100 signups to my Resume Re Revive and Thrive Challenge via YouTube and Facebook ads, as well as my list. Hold my first webinar to sell my course, and then sell 20 courses at 595. So that's something that I'm working towards and procrastinating on. <laughs> but it's because i got too many irons in the fire. Um, and then here I'll just recap what I'm working on, just for those of you who weren't at the, the meetup last time. And this is really, again, my path. So I started with uh, these Kindle books, wrote a book um, called LinkedIn Gold, which was really about using SEO or search engine optimization for your job search, so kind of pimping your LinkedIn profile to drive more interest from recruiters. Um, started getting checks from Amazon for a few hundred dollars. That was pretty good. That kind of got me excited. Made a few more books, but decided what I really need to do was start capturing those emails and build my email list, right? So I built this lead magnet. I created this resume refresh challenge, again, modeling after someone who I saw succeeding, creating something that was a little bit more fun and entertaining, and, and offered a lead magnet, so delivered value, right? So some sort of a, a giveaway, like a, a resume blueprint, resume template, things like that. Um, and then, of course, they would submit the form, then they would get into a drip email campaign, and then I was like, now what do I do, right? <laughs> so. Uh, this ended up evolving and turning into an online course. So I learned about Udemy and created this course, um, which I showed you the test video for, uh, which I call, um, oh god, what did I call it? Now I'm spacing out because I'm changing the name to it. Anyways, so uh, built this on Udemy. Um, again, came from that Kindle and then offered content upgrades directing students to my blogs to collect their email addresses. So obviously the platforms don't want you directing them off of their platform because that changes the experience, which they can't control. And you don't own your audience on Udemy. So they do allow you to message them. But for example, Skillshare, you can't blast and message all of your students. Okay, so they block you from doing that. Udemy allows you to do that, which is nice. But they'll also penalize you if you're going over the board and being too salesy. So you can be very subtle, like, hey, here's an optional piece of content. If you want it, you don't need it to succeed in the course. But if you want to get there faster, here's a shortcut, cheat sheet, a tip sheet, something like that. OK, so for my courses, which I then, the next step was, or the next phase was to multiply, so create multiple courses. So I created um, another paid course, my Marketing Automation Master Class. Uh, and there I have like a funnel guide that they can download. Um, and then I created a free course, totally free, don't make any money off of it, but it's called Mac Keyboard Shortcuts, and I have a Mac Keyboard Shortcut cheat sheet. And so that was really just showing you like, you know, all the swipe gestures like you see I'm doing here and how to set up your Mac and things like that. So um, decent ratings. I don't really get a lot of uh, emails from that course, but on occasion, and it's just running because it's in a marketplace, just up and running, so I'll get a trickle of emails. I'm actually getting about between all three of those courses, at least one email address a day, which is not a lot. But again, just getting started, as I mentioned, not too far ahead of where you guys are at. Uh, still 30 a month. Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Uh, and then the next step, and this is where I'm sort of procrastinating a little bit, is my next challenge. And so this is this uh, Resume Revive and Thrive video course. 
I've actually created this landing page already, so for five days in a row, each day I'll release a new video. Um, and so instead of trying to overcomplicate it with technology that will do that, I just created five versions of the landing page. Um, it's a WordPress site, so it's very easy to clone pages. And so I have that. That's actually done. And I built out my drip email nurture sequence. And really what's next is um, advertising. advertising and then my webinar. So kind of getting people to sign up for this. And then I push them to the webinar. And then I pitch my course at the end of that. And the webinar presentation is, is almost done, a previous iteration that I'm going to read. Are you going to make your webinar evergreen? Eventually, yeah. That's further down the road right now. It's just uh, really in what you hear from people is before you make it evergreen, you hold that webinar live every week for six months, three months, something mm -hmm. like that. So you get practice, you get it dialed in, you, you figure it out. You get it dialed in, you get it practiced, and when it starts converting well, that's exactly. when you make it evergreen. Exactly. Question. What's evergreen? Evergreen. Uh, <laughs> evergreen uh, a webinar, once you've perfected it, you record it, and then you make it so when people sign into your funnel, they can run the webinar when they want to. Okay. So, so it's not sign up on Tuesday at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. It's called sign in now. It runs in 15 minutes or it runs on the hour. So it's, it's automated. You, as a human, don't need to be there. It's recorded and technology's pushing it and running it so you don't need to be there. Okay. okay. Uh, perfect. Any questions, comments, thoughts on this? Okay. <coughs> All right. Any questions, comments, thoughts overall? Screaming along here. So, uh, on Udemy, uh, do you know who has taken your course? Yes. So I can see all of the students, um, and I can message them individually. The problem is, since Udemy will allow you, I think it's four promotional emails per month, people have become blind because they're getting emails from Udemy, they're getting emails from all their courses as soon as they sign up, hey, welcome to my course, da da da, da. I have tons of, you know, when I sign up for a course, I, I've never even looked at some of those messages. Oh, I read every one of them. So, That's um, cool. but what you could do is, uh, as soon as they are done with the course, that's yes. when you could start emailing them, right? Very good. Well, you would message them in the platform, right? Oh, okay. You, you could, for sure, absolutely. Uh, when they're done, yes, you'd have to go through and and look, yeah, you could do that. Yeah, I have a course that I just um, finished, and every time, so the course was broken up in different sessions, different modules, and at every time I would finish a module, I would get an email from the the course creator, okay. I guess, okay. and say, basically with some follow-up, okay, congratulations, you finished this module of this course, here's something that can add to your knowledge. Got it, so. And I, I would actually read those because it was related to what I was doing. So. Mm -hmm. so you wanted to see what a course looked like, so I'll share that with you. So we'll go into um, we'll go into this free course just to show that one. Again, they this is sort of a new interface. Let's do a curriculum. And then I'll preview as a student. And how do you know how to price it? Yeah, so there are, um, long story short, Udemy is trying to instill behavior into the marketplace. And so what they're doing is they want to sell courses, and so they're trying to price them at nine ninety five, pretty much for every course. So when you put it up there, you can price it whatever, but they run pro promotions almost every week where it's like, sales, uh, courses on sale for nine ninety five because they're trying to get people to s get in the habit of learning online, using online courses, right? It's early in, in, this, um, in this market, and so they're trying to instill behavior. Now they just moved up market a little bit, so now they're trying to sell them for fourteen ninety five. Eventually they'll go up. Now you also have the option to don't use their promotions and just price it how you want, but then you're not going to get the benefit of being in the marketplace, per se. Um, so there are people who are at the top, and they've been selling courses for a long time, like Phil Ebner is a guy who sells a lot of like video production courses. He's like speaks at the Udemy conference. His courses are like 
249 or 149 so you can price it when you start to get known and sell a lot you can price it for whatever you want so um, but you can just look at the competitors you know the max you can price it for is like 199 or something so you could put it for that they're gonna sell it for 995 it just looks like it's more value right oh I'm getting a $200 course for 10 bucks or 15 bucks it's a little gimmicky right now but that's a good question. Um, again, they're going to sell it for like nine ninety five all the time. Why is this? Right now, recently, all the all the demi courses that I've been seeing advertised are eleven ninety nine. Eleven ninety nine. None of them are nine ninety nine anymore. They're yeah. Eleven ninety nine. Eleven dollars ninety nine. Huh? Eleven dollars. Eleven dollars ninety nine cents on the on the sales. Well, so the here's thing is, what I did was when they came by at nine ninety nine, I just bought them. I just have them stacked in my my you know my library. So here's the content. You asked, what does it look like? Um, so here's section one. Uh, again, this is my Mac keyboard shortcut course. So be more efficient. Um, move between apps faster. Okay. Um, and then I have these four videos here that I've uploaded. So you can see, there's the first one. Second, again, sign a document directly in your Mac. Find file fast spell I search, and then I have six videos there. Section two, be a better designer, capture screenshots and window, windows as image files. Okay, and then I've uploaded these four videos here. Uh, and then section three, be a better presenter, move between app views seamlessly. And then there's four videos there. And then a section four, prevent interruptions, customize, clean, and troubleshoot your Mac. And I have four videos there. And a bonus at the end. And uh, how, uh, how long are your videos? Uh, let's take a look. I think just two minutes and 51 seconds, okay. 320. Okay. The minimum for a course on Udemy is 30 minutes. Okay. 30, the max or minutes? Total. 30 minutes for the course. Total. Total. All the, All the videos together added up have to be more than 30 minutes. Maybe you could uh, make a video course about how uh, the election system works. So we kind of went through this already. You guys already told me what you're working about. You know, choosing your topic, choose your medium, and then write your working title. So what helped me, especially with the Kindle books and even my online courses, was um, this method I learned, which was just sort of think through, if you have an idea, think through the sections you could have, like big sections. So for my, my marketing automation course, I have three sections. One is, um, the first one is learn, okay, because I wanted them to learn the theory. And then the second one was experience, so I wanted them to actually go through a marketing automation funnel. And then the third one was build, and I had them build their own marketing automation funnel and use the tool, which was free at the time. Yep, go ahead. Is it because people are more likely to understand three-step process? easier? I mean, three is always a good number. I'm not saying it needs to be three. I know three. we're in step four, but. Right. Uh, <laughs> no, three is always good, you know, but I'm just saying, as far as how t people think, I, I don't know, I, I have this course or this this book I want to write, but, uh, you know, nonfiction, I don't know how to do it. Okay, just work, create a title, working title, doesn't need to be anything. And now let's just think about the three sections. Well, people need to know how to, like, they need to know about it, right? It's, okay, so learn, right? But I want them to experience it because then you really get it, right? You can feel like in marketing automation, you can feel them turning up the buying temperature as they get more emails, right? The first one, the indoctrination. Hey, I'm Lance. Thanks for signing up. It's cool. Let's make sure we're a good fit. If you don't like my content, just unsubscribe. But let me tell you more about me so you can get to know me. Here's my values. Here's where I can help you with. Here's where I can't. Awesome. We'll see you in the next email. Slowly, slowly, and then slowly, kind of passively mention something that maybe you want to sell or more content, and you kind of then they like look forward to your email. So I have people that I like, and I actually s still sign up for all their emails, and they put me in other drips because I enjoy their content so much. I love the tone, I know, like, and trust them, and I like to see what they're doing from a business standpoint, right? Because we're all in the same same area. So create those three sections or whatever, um, and then write chapter headings for each one of them, right? So then I'm like, oh, I want to teach you like the vocabulary so you know what I'm talking about as I go through the rest of this course. And then let's talk about the technical limitations or let's talk about the fundamentals or the mechanics and things like that. So that's a great way to start for um, a particular round courses. So we already went through this for the most part. And those three and steps are, I was a teacher, elementary school teacher for 10 years, that's a lesson plan you teach practice you apply there you go the teach things. practice yeah. and apply so instead of practice you're experiencing same thing very good 
supplying your building. Very good, very good. So um, again, I'll probably send out a survey in the next few days, so please take a few minutes and just uh, give me your feedback, let me know, you know, I want to know if this is a good location or the other one was better or where we should maybe meet um, and what other topics you want to cover in specifics and we'll, uh, we'll try to cater the, the meetup towards that. And also, in the actual meetup platform, if you guys want to provide feedback on this particular session, I'd appreciate your positive, kind, lighthearted feedback. <laughs> Save the brutal stuff for the survey. You can hammer me there. But um, anyways, I appreciate that. And um, that's really all I had tonight. So you guys can, thanks. Yeah. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.